focused in other areas. And, and some people begin to ask, well, how does that differ from a conversation with a passenger? Well, a passenger, the conversation modulates up and down as the demands of the driving situation change. So if someone slams on their brakes in front, both the driver and the passenger have a tendency to focus their attention. The conversational dip and the demand of that conversation drops off. We focus on driving, we pick up the conversation very naturally. Well, with a phone, the person I was having a conversation with didn't see what was going on. They kept talking. My brain did what it's supposed to do, kept listening. So what you're saying is be between hands-free and handheld, there's not that much difference. Not but where all. would you put that as opposed to texting? Just texting is to, still... Uh, texting is by far more dangerous. I mean, the visual and manipulative demands of texting and, and entering that level of complexity of information into a device while you're driving has really been shown throughout the research world as more dangerous and, and, and not a little bit more dangerous, a lot more dangerous. Yeah, and one of the problems with hands-free is when people go to that, they now realize they've got another hand that they can, a free hand that they can do something else with. You know, they can grab for the French fries or off to the side or smoke a cigarette or, um, you know, who, who knows what, because that hand's available to do yeah. that. People do it all the time. You know, one of the things, and, and this is not something the research shows that I like to think about is I, I don't use a hands-free device. Why? Because I, if I have a conversation while I'm driving, I like it to be short. And when you hold a phone up to your ear, it becomes very short. It's tiring. The act of holding the phone and is a reminder that I'm doing something and it's tiring. So I put it down much faster. If I come in and I, and I put a Bluetooth in my ear, I'm talking and rambling and find myself talking for I much longer. I swear some people have their cell phones glued to their glued ears. Glued to their ears. Yeah. And they just keep talking and talking and talking. Well, they're not going to keep their phone glued to their ear like this right. because their arm is going to feel like it's going to fall off. And one of the things I think it's important to highlight, it's not that driving and talking on a phone is not dangerous. It is dangerous. It has consequences. It takes your attention from the road. Well, how dangerous it is, is really what's not clear. Texting, on the other hand, is by and large not a safe activity to do while you're driving down the road or you're pulled over and sitting in the stoplight waiting for it to turn green because your attention's off the road and you don't keep up with it. Wasn't there also a study about when you, your eyes moved, that, that, you're, that the, mm. the, the, the vehicle moves, the vehicle with moves the, mm. the direction of your eyes, well, when your you eyes go over here to your, in your texting? When you first learn how to drive, and you might remember, you say, look where you want to go. Exactly. I re always remember that from driver's ed. I Basic driver's ed. That. Yeah. So, you know, you move over here, yeah. we head over here. And not only where you're going, but where the other driver is going. The National Safety Council recommends that every three to five seconds, you do a complete scan, looking as far down the road as you can, looking behind you, looking beside you, using the mirrors, so that you have assessed what you're driving into, driving out of what's going on all around your vehicle, really. Now, here you are texting. You're not aware of what the other drivers around you are doing. You're not aware when the person in front of you stops. You're not aware so when your you close, from here your, your here. following distance becomes negligible. Um, the risk factor becomes so much larger because you're totally unaware. The same is by and large true for the cellular phone conversation. The cognitive workload involved in cell phone conversations begins to affect the vision system by focusing forward, or, or tunnel vision you might refer to, where, where we drive and we're really focused on what's happening in front of me and, and not aware of what's going on around us. In, in aircraft, you know, or pilots are trained very precisely in a specific glance pattern. Look at the front, look down to the display in a variety of different spots in the display. In driving, we don't know what you should be looking out, out in front of you. We just know that you should be monitoring your surroundings and paying attention to what's going on around you. The environment is changing in very fast and very unpredictable ways. Right. Now, has anybody heard of any technology that might be able to mitigate or prevent um, some of these issues, especially parents must wonder, well, what can I do? Is there something I can put in my kid's phone? Or do you think that technology is on the horizon? I think it's called airbags. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th there is some technology. There's a man by the name of David Teeter who um, 
a few years back, lost his 12-year-old son. Mm. The crash happened when a young 20-year-old woman was on the cell phone, totally unaware that she's in, in, in tr two lanes of traffic going the same direction. The right-hand lane was backed up at the light for an extended difference, distance, but her lack of awareness because she's on that cell phone, she went right past all of the vehicles, went right through the light and broadsided the car being driven by David's um, wife and, and son was in it and killed. And he has been involved in automotive technology all of his life. He then refocused his attention. And I can't say a lot about it other than the fact that there's a program they're working on that when the cell phone is in a vehicle that's moving, the cell phone will detect the fact that that vehicle is moving. And will, if an incoming call comes in, will automatically send it to voicemail with some kind of a message to the effect of the person you're trying to reach is in a vehicle moving at X number, you know, or, or moving, and, and therefore um, you might want to consider calling back, or however it's worded. Right. And if the person keeps calling back through at some point, of course, the, the individual may pick it up. Um, but it's at least some effort to block incoming. It doesn't block the choice to, to send an outgoing message that becomes the individual choice and I go back to the, the educational need to convince people just not to do that. I'm not familiar with this particular case, but I know there are, there are a large number of groups uh, around the country looking at different ways of blocking, per se, the call. And it, the primitive form of Volvo, Saab, I know, are two cars that have workload managers in them, so the hands-free systems, per se, will delay the call um, for a period of time. Um, if you're you, you're in particularly heavy traffic or, or in a sharp curve, and I don't know the exact parameters, um, but they'll delay the call. Oh. In, if we look at regulating when the call, oh, phone will ring or when the call, phone won't ring, the consumer electronics industry is moving so fast, we can't keep up with that. Mm -hmm. We need to fundamentally tackle the behavior and the social implications of the individual's choice and, and demands. In many states, you know, a technological solution, a counteract a technological solution, doesn't necessarily work too well. Right, and yeah. so maybe that's that's something that we can focus on too, not only with education and research and legislation, what the next thing is, is going to be and be one step ahead, yeah. you know, and open-minded with our laws and our education that this isn't just something that is the cell phone. I know on my ride here today, my Garmin was driving me crazy. You know, and I, I rely upon it for my information, for my direction. And so sometimes a lot of these things are distractions beyond just the cell phone. And, you know, maybe we can learn to turn it off and, or tune it out and, and drive a little bit safer. Some of the applications, voice controlled applications, video driven applications that are available through today's smartphones will boggle our minds four or five years down the road. But ultimately, it's behavioral. It's <coughs> absolutely behavioral. dangerous and behavior, and, and you have to modify the behavior through, exactly. through, through education that it's dangerous. When parents send their children out, they don't just say, be careful driving, you know, don't drink and drive, don't use your cell phone, or don't use your text message, you know, don't text message while you, yeah. while you yeah. drive. And behavioral, and behavioral issues are very difficult to change, but in, in, yeah. it, they, it they, takes time. They, they are. The reality is, in this country every year, they're just under six million motor vehicle crashes. About three million injuries, and on average 41,000 or so people are killed every year. And that's been that way for X number of years. Cars are safer, we may be driving more miles in spite of the economy overall compared to say 10 or 15 years ago. But in spite of that, you know, we just keep killing 41,000 people. And, and think about the three million injuries, people are inclined to think they're minor injuries that'll heal oh, and go away. A third of all the admissions to brain injury treatment centers and to spinal cord rehab centers and suffer the result of motor vehicle crashes. Motor vehicle crashes are the fourth leading cause of death in this country after heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And the studies show over and over and over again that 90 to 95 percent of all crashes don't have to happen. They are the results of the choices that we make as drivers. We call them all accidents. Most of them are not accidents. Most of them are the outcomes of the choices that we make mm -hmm. to make our life more convenient or because our priorities are out of focus, because we just aren't paying attention to the reality of what's happening. Um, the investment in auto safety, per se, needs to go up. If a disease killed 40,000 Americans a year 
and was perceived that way. The investment in that disease would be far larger than we see the investment in auto safety, mm -hmm. whether it's education, that's technology, that's fundamental active or, safe, or passive safety systems in the car. Mm -hmm. We need to invest more in research, we need to invest more in education, and we need some policy to back it up. Every day